This session is installation and a general purpose installation. It's all about the recently launched product that we just launched at our recent conference in August over in Perth. So anything that installers need to be aware of is what we're gonna cover in this session. And this session will take about 40 to 45 minutes uh, and we have some time for questions at the end. The first product we're going to talk about is our Evo. As you know, Evo for us has been a very strong supporter, a very strong performer, and it's an amazing product that's just gone from strength to strength with all of the improvements that we've made to the Evo product over the years. Well, we're really pleased to bring to you a new improvement to Evo STC. We're launching an adjustable side channel. We'll be playing a video for you shortly, but some of the features there with the Evo STC adjustable side channel is that you'll now be able to fix in locations that are up to 20 millimetres out of square. So 10 millimetres either side. That's huge. It has a slide on cover. Some improvements to the channel. Improvements to the top cap to get the fabric aligned correctly. And also some improvements to the bottom rail end cap to give us better fabric security and also reduce light gap. Now we're going to stream to you, we're going to play you a video, which is about a three minute video, about the installation of the Evo STC adjustable side channel. So Trevor? Evo STC, installation of adjustable side channel. The principal feature and benefit of the adjustable side channel is its ability to install in out of square situations. The adjustable side channel provides an out of square tolerance of 20 millimetres, 10 millimetres each side. It is still essential that you install the head box level. Then install the side channels in line with the existing post or wall. There is no longer the need to pack out the channel to be square. Cycle the skin down and up two times so that the floating guide finds its true position. Leaving the skin in the down position, adjust the top alignment cap. This keeps the floating guide at the top in the correct position as determined when the skin was run down and up. Tighten to secure in the desired position. The channel is pre-punched with notches at 580 millimeter intervals to enable the floating guide to be secured. Hold the floating guide under tension and drill through the floating guide and into the first surface of the channel. Do not drill right through the channel. 30 millimeter screws are provided to secure the floating guide to the channel. We recommend a four millimeter clearance hole be drilled through the floating guide. It is recommended that the first securing of the floating guide be done at the notching closest to the midway point of the channel. Additional securing points can be used if required. Securing the floating guide prevents excessive movement of the skin and provides a superior finish. The channel cover for the Evo STC with adjustable side channel slides into position as shown. Slide it into position from the top and work down. Secure the channel cover by inserting a screw top and bottom as shown. This will prevent the cover from dislodging in windy conditions. The removal of the channel cover is simply a reversal of the install process. So, what you see in that video, fairly self-explanatory, but a couple of key things there. Obviously, fitting the Evo is unchanged as far as where you fit the Evo head box, always through the brackets. Fitting the back part of the channel, obviously now you've got the assistance for face fit where you'll have the pre-drilled holes. For, re for reveal fit, you're going to be fitting the same way through the side. But what we've got, we've got a slide on front cover, and we're just sharing you an image of that slide on front cover now. And you can see it really is a slide clip-on cover 
much easier to put on and remove than the previous system that you click on, click off, and you, you know, for, a, for, for reveal fit scenarios, this is obviously a lot easier than the previous one. So it's a nice fit. What you see in the next image now, the notching and the pre-drilled hole. So that pre-drilled 10 millimeter fixing hole gives you a pilot hole to drill and then to run your screw through for face fit. The notching, that notching and that pilot hole will be every 580 millimetres. Now, the notching is there so you can access the floating guide and be able to drill a hole and put a screw and secure that floating guide. So the scenario is you can put the channels up out of square 10 mil either side, but the floating guide will be sitting within that channel and it will be sitting square. So, saw in the video, we run the skin up and down several times. The skin finds its position. Hold that floating guide, pre-drill a hole, put a screw in, and as the video said, we're recommending that at least one of those goes in roughly in the centre, depending on where your notching is. Your notches come 580 intervals because the extrusion is 5.8 metres long, so the notches are at that interval. The fixing screw. And then we've also made some improvements to top cap. So you've got your aligning points there for your top cap. So we can line it up correctly with the bracket and get it positioned perfectly. And then you'll see the actual aligner, which is all about getting the floating guide in the right position at the top to hold the fabric in the right position. So you saw in the video there, slide it out under a little bit of tension with a six millimeter open end spanner, you tighten that up in the position that you want, and then you position the floating guide and put screws in the floating guide. So there's your top cap aligner. Now the bottom cap's also been improved. Obviously we've still got the provision to actually have a locking bolt slide through it, and you'll see in the bottom right hand corner of that little picture there, a couple of spots for the screws to go into to hold the actual um, the, uh, the cover plate. Now, the other great thing about these top caps and the bottom caps is that they're now universal. So the left cap and the right cap are the same. Previously, we had specific left and right caps. Bottom rail cap, some improvements there as well with an additional fixing screw to just increase that fabric security and also help us, uh, we've reduced the light gap as well with that new bottom rail. Now, the other thing that we've also done with Evo, in the scenario where we're fitting an Evo head box and we're fully revealed, we need to make sure that obviously that front cover is securely in place. So what we've done, you're now getting a standard on the end caps. You'll see the lugs are on prefabricated on that end cap. Okay? So you have the lug in position for either the closed or the open head box. You don't no longer have to measure and mark and attach those little bits of angle. These come prefabricated with the lugs there ready for you to screw straight into. So that's another big improvement. The other thing with Evo that we just wanted to, I guess, bring to your attention is that we've had Silver Pearl for quite a while. It's a very popular colour, done very well. But we are increasing the standard colour range. So the standard stocked colours go from the one Silver Pearl colour now five colours. Now these colours match really well with the top selling colour bond colours. We've got Chardonnay, Yolumba, Mombasa and Thundercloud. Now these are standard stocked colours that do not incur any surcharge. So they're the same price as the Silver Pearl. So obviously there's some saving there from powder coating and these colours I think will be very popular. You can see them on screen there what those, uh, what the five colours in the EVO will be available in. Trevor, I don't think I've missed anything there with EVO. Was there anything? I think that was all. Yep, yep. So what, what we'll do, and as I said at the beginning, we, we're, we're really happy to take your questions. Um, just send us a prompt in a text and, and ask your questions. I might just check with the guys if anyone has a question at this stage. No, no, all good, we'll move on, we'll move on. All right, staying with Evo, I want to talk to you about something that's very exciting. We launched our PowerView product in uh, April, May this year, 
And obviously we were keen to try and get more products over to the PowerView product range. So as of the 12th of October this year, you're going to have a PowerView motor for Evo. So what that means is you'll have the same ability to have the connected home, the hub, the app, the beautiful PowerView remotes with the six channel functionality, the surface mounts, all those sort of things that really make that whole automation system quite unique. You'll be able to operate your Evo with that. So from the 12th of October, you'll have access to a 240 volt, 15 newton meter, 30 RPM PowerView motor for Evo warnings. Fantastic product, manufactured in Italy, Germany and the USA. It is a high quality premium end motor. And obviously with the PowerView hub and the app, you have the ability to control that through your Apple or Android devices, the same way that you would control the PowerView Softshade products that you guys are selling so well now. So that's, uh, that's a great thing that's available to you from the 12th of October. Moving on, we, as you know, we have the Photon 1 solar powered motor for Evo. Launched a few months ago now, hugely successful, and we're now extending the availability of that to our System 2000 pivot arm warnings and System 2000 straight drops. So the great thing about the Photon 1 solar motor is it allows that cost effective solution minimal, where there's minimal access for hardwired cabling and you don't need an electrician because it's actually a 24 volt DC battery pack. That means you don't need an electrician. Obviously, being solar powered, it comes with a solar panel, comes with a battery pack, and obviously comes with a motor in the awning. Now we made the call to make those, th those things three separate components. So you had access to service each one of them without replacing everything. We know in the solar panels, you only need as little as two to three hours of sunlight to give you enough charge to run that awning for a few days. You have the adjustability on the solar panel so it can capture the best um, angle of the sun. <coughs> Excuse me. And the battery pack also comes in a water resistant covering. Now you can extend the distance you have that solar panel away from the awning itself and away from the battery pack by using extension cables if you want to get that solar panel up on the roof or around the corner. If you've got an awning in a southern facing window, for instance, you really want that panel to be somewhere else. Now, Photon 1 is operated by remote control. As you can see on your screen, it is operated by the old Powerize Platinum remote control. So it is that older banana remote that we utilize to operate that product. Now, we just had a question, which I answered on the text chat, but uh, wow. the question was... You are getting good with this, Jim. <laughs> the question was, yes, I can ditch it, it once almost. Um, the question was, will this be moving over to PowerView? And the answer is yes. In, in 2017, the, the new PowerView control of mechanisms with the pebble and things, and then the hub, and that will all be moving into this photon as well. At this point in time, though, it's still on the... It's still with that. The old yep. But we sort of talk about it in-house. You know, we believe in time we'll have the one remote to rule them all, uh, like the one ring to rule them all. So we want to power view everything. So um, that's great. So good question, whoever that was. Um, as I said, you can also have, uh, you've got the remote, you can have a wireless wall switch as well. You also have the feature in this, uh, the Photon 1 motor, which is a fabric tensioning feature. So you can have a lockdown awning with lock bolts or straps. And like the Loggia motor, you've got the tensioning feature to sort of take a bit of tension, make the skin look taut, and then back off. One of the great things with Photon 1, it really does support almost the largest size Evo awnings that we do. And you can do up to a 15 square metre Evo awning with an unweighted bottom rail, or up to 11 square metres with a weighted bottom rail. And we know from our stats that even at 11 square metres, most of our awnings that we make fall into that, uh, into that scenario. So there's your, your, your Evo update there. And as I said, very exciting with the actual PowerView option now for Evo. And I think I'm right in saying, Barry, that System 2000 is now... I did mention that. Yep. Were you not listening? No, I wasn't. There you go. I um, can't do three things. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, as I said, I'm pretty sure I said it, but I'll say it again, that um, Photon Motor is now available for System 2000 Pivot Arm and System 2000 Straight Drop. So... Moving further into uh, the Barry, program. We do have a question. Another question, yes. yes. Can they be used for folding arm awnings? 
At this stage, the question was, can they be used for folding arm awnings? No, at this stage, we're not there. I know it's something Kane would love to bring to you and love to do, but at the moment, I couldn't even give you a, a date when that might happen. But yeah, we'd like to do it as well. Moving on, but sticking with PowerView, this is really exciting stuff now because what we've done is fast track some stuff that's happening in the US to bring you PowerView for roller blinds as well. So you've got the soft stage, you've got the Evo, you've now got PowerView for roller blinds as well. Great thing again, I don't want to harp on it, but obviously you've got the functionality of the new remotes, the hub, the scene control, the app, and all those things that we know for PowerView, now available for roller blinds. This is really giving us a full complement of product that we can operate from this PowerView automation system. So really high quality premium end motors, super quiet. We've got the 330, the 620 motors. Some of you probably will look at that and know straight away it's the same settings as the Sompi product. They're PowerView compatible, obviously. And we've gone with a Molex connector. We listen to a lot of feedback from you guys and the Molex connector is the preferred option for connecting power. So we've gone with Molex. And obviously, these are the motors for our Edge 50 millimeter system. And obviously they slot straight into that product that you know well. Also, for our heavy duty system, the 65 mil system, we have a motor, a power of your roller blind motor, that will work with the system as well. So a 530, to me, I guess the most exciting one, because it's power view, is we're going to give you a battery operated power view roller blind motor, obviously for the 37 mil tube. That's the exciting part. I mean, we know power view in soft stage as being something that you know, we can operate it from the battery pack or we can have DC, so the battery pack really does make it quite a uh, quite an affordable thing without having to get an electrician come in. So you've got a super quiet operation motor that'll suit a 37 millimeter tube. It has exactly the same battery wand that you know and use on the soft shade product with those 12 AA batteries with about a 12 month factory life built in. Now, Edge 37, as you know, we'll go to 2600 wide on Edge 37. We do have a maximum square meterage of six meters on this system. Again, the vast majority of blinds that we do fall into this size. So you'll have that battery power view roller blind option on that 37 mil tube. The battery pack will come with a clip and obviously the battery pack needs to be fitted up behind the roller blind. Great product, but if you don't have somewhere to fit that battery pack, then I guess be conscious of, um, of what you're selling. But a great new addition. So really now got a really good complement of product that is supported by the PowerView system. Now, staying with roller blinds, we have another exciting product that we launched at conference as well. And as you know, spring roller blinds have been around on the market for, for, you know, probably long, well, longer than chain drive blinds. What we've brought to you is a totally new, innovative, patented spring assembly system that's quite unique for, um, for uh, I guess, chainless or cordless roller blinds. So, pleased to bring you Light Rise Roller Blind. Now, like all Light Rise products, I think it's very important to be conscious that it's a product that's great providing you can reach the top and you can reach the bottom of the blind. When you're out of those limitations, it's probably not the most ideal product to be selling. So it's available on 37 mil tube. As I said, 2600 maximum width, 2100 maximum drop, because we're sort of, we are limiting that, or that's a reflection I should say, on what's a practical height to operate. The minimum, maximum weight of the product can take is four kilos. So that's a, that's a fair bit in fabric. We've got really good light gaps. We've got 11 millimeter light gaps, which is fantastic. So nice 10 to 11 mil symmetrical light gaps. The other great thing is that when you use the ellipse base rail, you can offer all of the fabrics in our range. Our translucence, our blockouts, our textured, our sunscreens, all of them when you're using the ellipse base rail. So that's something we haven't been able to give you before. Now these can be used on dual blinds, but they cannot be linked. And I'll just quickly show you, I've got a blind here, and I'll just step to the side. It really is a smooth, effortless operation. And you can see there, 
I'm actually just pushing up from the bottom, like a light rise duet does, like a light rise silhouette or a light rise modern Roman. It's not tug it down and release the spring for it to go up. It's a very finely tuned spring that lives within that housing there. Now, it's the same edge 37 mil bracket that you know, but obviously the light rays has a slightly different adapter on it. Obviously, if this adapter connects to the assembly that's at the, at the edge of the spring. Now, these come from the factory in the blind, tensioned for that blind. When you go out and install these blinds, you should not need to change anything. But if you need to, if for whatever reason you need to add slightly a little bit more tension or a bit less tension, you need to put a bracket or an adapter into the end. You need to hold that. And then with a six millimeter Allen key, you actually need to push in and depress. There's a little, you'll feel some spring tension in there. You need to depress that and turn it clockwise to add some tension or anti-clockwise to release some tension. Now, the blind can be up in the bracket, and you can be doing that when the blind is in the bracket. If it was on face and you can take off the, uh, the, uh, the end cap or the, uh, the bracket cover and you can access that, obviously if it's in a, reveal, in a reveal, you'll need to take the blind down, hold that edge, and you can add or release a little bit of tension. Now, you can remove that spring from that roller tube. You won't lose the tension on that spring. I mean, for all the trials that we've been involved in, I don't think you're going to need to do that at all. I think you're going to get the blind, you're going to put it up, it's going to be set as this one was beautifully right from the word go. But it is a soft operation. It's a very soft, light operation, and it holds its position at every point. So you don't have those old spring roller blind increments. It's a nice, smooth stop wherever you leave it. So obviously measuring exactly the same as you would measure for your edge roller blind system now. And installation, it, it, it really is the same. I've just gone through the little, the little exercise there. So having a six mil Allen key, and no doubt most installers would, um, would have that. We like the T-piece Allen key assemblies. They're, they're much easier to work with. Um, you can pick those up at tool stores. There's four springs. There's two singles, and there's, there's two doubles depending on, obviously, the size and the weight of the blind and the fabric that's going on. So, um, yeah, light rise, roller blinds, again, child safety, paramount. This is really a product that I think is going to take off uh, quite well. And it's not the old, you know, clunky, you know, roller blind that comes flying off the brackets when you let go of it. It's going to have a beautiful, soft start and soft finish. Barry, we have a question on the yes. light rise. Um, question is, will the light rise springs be able to do wider windows in the future as Australian windows seem to be getting wider? Yeah, look, at the moment, the, the system is designed for our 37 mil tube. And I'm never going to say, no, we'll never do it. At the moment, um, I, I'm actually not sure, but I'm not aware of any plans to, uh, to have it adaptable to the 50 millimeter tube. But happy to take that back to the product manager and, um, and let that know. Um, we can do, as I said, the 2600 width um, with, um, with the current 37 mil system, but yeah. You don't know any more on that, Trevor? Uh, that's no. the only question. Okay. One more thing I'll just point out before I move on from light rise roller blind, because you'll see this when you get these blinds and fit them. Because we want a nice, smooth operation, you'll notice that the idle end looks the same, is almost the same, but it's a little bit different. The actual idle pin itself actually has a ball bearing in it. So we've got less friction. So we have nice, smooth rollability when that blind is going up and down. Because we are setting fairly fine-tuned tension on that spring, we want the least amount of friction. So you'll, you'll see that as well. Now, sticking with light rise, we've also introduced another light rise product in line with, I guess, what's important, particularly with child safety. So <coughs> we've launched a light rise timber Venetian blind. Now, light rise timber Venetian blind, same scenario, can't reach the top, can't reach the, bottom, reach the bottom, not necessarily the most practical product to sell. But what we've got here, and I'll just actually um, 
operate this blind first. Show you what I mean. I'll just stand out of camera. So again, it's raised by lifting the base rail, pulling down and lifting. Now, there's quite a heavy duty patented gearing system in there because Venetian's a heavy product, as you know, much heavier than a roller blind and even a duet. So that system in there really is an advanced motor gear system designed to lift the weight of a timber Venetian. Okay? Available for both the country woods and the wood essence collections. But, as I said, timber Venetians, wood essence Venetians are heavy Venetians. So there are some size limitations. In the timber, in the country woods, you have a 3.6 square metre limitation. On the wood essence, it's 2.9 because the wood essence is heavier. But again, when child safety is paramount, kids' rooms and that sort of scenario, it's the ideal product to use if you can. Measuring, same as you would measure the timber Venetians now, no changes. Installation, same. You just don't have to fit the cleats for the, for the cords. What we do have for the tilt on the actual Venetian, the light rise Venetian, is have a wand. So again, moving away from child safety, we have a wand instead of cords. I'll just get my bracket to come over and hold this blind for me. Thanks, bracket. So you're going to get the blind and you're going to get the wand separate. Now, the wand is clear, so it's fairly unobtrusive and it blends in quite well. To attach the wand, slide off the top clear dome part of that wand, and you'll see like a paperclip hook. It's pretty simple, and that just hooks in to that tilter. Okay, but before you do that, make sure you slide that over, hook in, and then pull that plastic shroud down over to lock in that clip onto that. As I said, light rise. Holds its position, child safe, wand operated, available. The 50 and the 63 mil, the different products. So that's another great child safe option for you. Any questions on any of that? I mean, it's great that you're asking questions, guys. I really appreciate it. I know this is, this is new platform, new technology. So you, you're sort of typing your questions, which is fantastic. I really appreciate that. So, no um, questions on that one, Barry? No? Oh, yes, there is. Just yep. Uh, same square meterage for 50 or 63 millimetre? I, yes, I believe so. I did ask that question. Yes. Yep. Although, I have someone in the back of the room that might actually know whether that's true or not. We do have Jess Donoghue with us, who's down the back help moder moderating the session. Yeah, we're pretty... I did ask the question, and we've, we're fairly sure that that is the same limitation. So... So that's the new things that we launched. But what I wanted to do now was just talk through Pirouette. Now, the reason I want to do that is we get some, I guess, queries with vein alignment, with Pirouette, um, even the brackets, because we've got you know, two different head rails. We, we launched a new version 3 head rail back in April, May this year. So I just wanted to recap for a few people a couple of things. And I apologise for moving out of camera occasionally, but... Uh, I didn't want my table in full view. So Pirouette is now fitted with what you would all know as the standard silhouette mounting bracket. It's a fairly easy top fix or face fit bracket. It has a little plastic gate on it, which when you slide the head rail in and give it that little punch, you know, I should say tap, not punch, um, that gate locks off and really locks that head box in place. So same bracket, silhouette and pirouette. When you get Pirouette, they all come out with this black plastic cover on it. Now, obviously, that's there for a good reason. It's there to protect the fabric on the head box. You leave that on right until the very last minute. You fit the blind. You fit the child safety if you've got an easy rise. You do everything. You can operate the blind. You do everything, and then at the last minute as you finish, you remove that. Throw it away. It's recyclable, so it can go into a recycle bin. It's there to protect the fabric cover. Okay, so that's Pirouette. Now, we have some adjustment on Pirouette. Trevor, I might get you to zoom in. We have 
in the base bar on Pirouette, we have a weight bar. And you have these little, let me move that to, yep. If you put a flat screwdriver in there, you can open that little lever and the other, and you can slide the weight bar to help with the tracking of the fabric. Now, a lot of people probably make the mistake of doing that, moving that weight bar too far. It really is small increments, and we'd probably suggest 25 mil increments at a time to gauge and see what the fabric does as far as getting it to track better. We do put it in the position when we've got it on the hoist in our factory that we believe is the right position. We do run them up and down and track them. But if you need to adjust it on site, you have that ability to do that there as well. So obviously, pirouette, just a, a, just a reminder, refresher uh, of what you can do. Um, we also get some people, they want vein alignment. And as you probably know, pirouettes come in a 100 mil vein and a 120 mil vein. We have been asked if we can line up veins. Um, you can't line up 100 and 120, so that's, that's not possible. But we will do our best to line up veins, 100 with 100 and a 120 with a 120, but we have a three millimetre tolerance. And really three millimetres is something that when you're looking at a blind from two or three metres away, it becomes insignificant. So we do our best, but we do have that three millimetre tolerance. Um, Measuring pirouettes is the same as the previous head box. So you've still got on face, five mil on drop, don't need you to t take a deduction on the width, and in reveal, five mil on width, five mil on drop. So the deductions haven't changed. I think size limitations did change with the new system. We were able to go to bigger. So Easy Rise, Ultra Glide, and Power View, maximum width, 2440, maximum drop 2440. So those, those limitations did improve when we went to the new system. Same bracket as silhouettes. Um, Trevor, I'm now thinking, I've covered everything there for, for the pirouette. There's probably no questions on pirouette. It was just an opportunity to, I guess, do a bit of a refresher on, uh, on the pirouette. You know, and of course, you know, with the new head rail, you're probably aware that bottom rail tucks up nice and neatly into that head box. It's a, a beautiful, beautiful, clean look. So, um, so that's all the product update that we think the installers need to know about. So we, we've gone through that. Um, happy to take more questions if they pop through. But, oh, you sorry, Trevor's going to talk about a few other little things to do with Evo. Where, as an installer, although this is more for, probably for salespeople, but I think you need to know it, and that is that there is um, a change in the openness factor on the Everscreen Plus uh, sunscreen fabric that we primarily sell on Evos, but which could be sold on System 2000 and other product as well. Um, there is 13 new colours, and as of the 12th of October, you may start to see product coming through that you've been asked to fit where the openness factor is down to 5%. Now, the current range is 10. It will all be moving. The 13 new colours move to 5% openness. And of those 13 colours, five of them also have an option of 1%. So I think you need to be aware of that as an installer. Now, the 1% there is, is a privacy factor. It's, it's almost opaque. So ideal in a situation where, for instance, you're wanting to close in the side of a veranda because neighbours can see in, but you want to keep your view through the 5% looking out over the backyard or, or wherever the, the view is. So you may start to see as an installer this fabric coming through with 5%. We certainly will see it coming through with 5 and you also will notice a much tighter weave of 1% as well. The five colours that are coming in on the... Um, uh, the 1% are Mombasa, White, Yolumba, and a, and a cross weave with Mombasa and grey, misty grey, and also schist. They're the, they're the five colours that are also in the 1%. I'm just going to flick through some uh, colour boards here just to give you an idea of what the colour ranges are in the new range. Barry will move them on for us. So we obviously start off with the beiges, colours, and the torps, which are quite trendy at the moment. And the next board, if you move to that one, we'll see... We've obviously had the traditional whites and creams, always a market for those. And the third board is where the real current trends are, of course, and that's in the greys and the charcoals and heading into the black even on that. So they're the 13 colours which have become available for release from the 12th of October. 
Thanks, Trev. Great. Guys, th that is the end of the session. Not sure if there's any questions there to have come through. I'll just get Trev to have a quick look. Any questions there, Trev, before we draw this there lucky door prize? Yes, there is. We have got a question. Can you play the Evo video again at the end? Absolutely. You don't need an update, so I missed it. We Absolutely. That's that. a that's a really good idea. Right we'll at the definitely end, we'll do that. So, um, so what we'll do, though, we'll, we're going to draw the lucky door prize, and we're going to play. Now, Jess happened to be in the room, so I'm sure you all know Jess. So Jess is going to draw the lucky door prize. So, Jess, thank you. The winner is... Michael from Illawarra Blinds. Is Michael on the line still? Is Michael with us? Because Michael needs to be with us to win the prize. So are you there, Michael? Can we unmute him? No, Michael. We don't, we don't have Michael with us. Okay, we're going to redraw. We have a Mark. Mark Oten. Mark Oten from Oten's in Casino. Not with us. Third time lucky. Wow. I'm here. Right. Sorry. What did you do? I'm here. Please. Mark's with us. Thank you, Mark. Again, oh, you signed in as sure. guest. We didn't know you were with us. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Mark, you've won a $200 Bunnings voucher. Super. Fantastic. And we'll send that up to you. Thank you for that. Fantastic. All right, guys, look, that's the end of the session. Really appreciate you all taking part. We're going to play that Evo video for you again. It is also something that will be on the Alfie app very shortly as well. One last thing before you go, you will receive a survey hopefully this afternoon just to give us that feedback on the session. So any feedback, any thoughts or suggestions, please tell us. We really want these things to, uh, to, to, to be good for everybody. All right, thanks guys. We'll leave you with the Evo video. Evo STC, installation of adjustable side channel. The principal feature and benefit of the adjustable side channel is its ability to install in out of square situations. The adjustable side channel provides an out of square tolerance of 20 millimeters, 10 millimeters each side. It is still essential that you install the head box level. Then install the side channels in line with the existing post or wall. There is no longer the need to pack out the channel to be square. Cycle the skin down and up two times so that the floating guide finds its true position. Leaving the skin in the down position, adjust the top alignment cap. This keeps the floating guide at the top in the correct position as determined when the skin was run down and up. Tighten to secure in the desired position. The channel is pre-punched with notches at 580 millimetre intervals to enable the floating guide to be secured. Hold the floating guide under tension and drill through the floating guide and into the first surface of the channel. Do not drill right through the channel. 30 millimetre screws are provided to secure the floating guide to the channel. We recommend a 4 millimetre clearance hole be drilled through the floating guide. It is recommended that the first securing of the floating guide be done at the notching closest to the midway point of the channel. Additional securing points can be used if required. Securing the floating guide prevents excessive movement of the skin and provides a superior finish. The channel cover for the EVO STC with adjustable side channel slides into position as shown. Slide it into position from the top and work down. Secure the channel cover by inserting a screw top and bottom as shown. This will prevent the cover from dislodging in windy conditions. The removal of the channel cover is simply a reversal of the install process.